quite tricky. We're back in, back in the west of Ireland with Daniel in Sligo. And we're stalking fallow. This is really, really tight woodland. I don't stalk woodland much anymore and I haven't stalked fallow in five or six years, but I'd forgotten how switched on and steady you have to go. You just have to look into every single gap you can see. Especially at this time of year or into February. And the deer, like there's no, not much movement from them at this time of year. They're struggling for food, so they won't be doing much traveling to the feeding areas. So we're just taking it real slow. We've just had a deer cross the lane here in front of us. And I'd say it's something that we spooked down in this hollow. But this is really, really rugged ground. So there's lots of little holes and hollows and dips that the deer are going to be in. And it's going to require a certain amount of luck to get one here. Deer stalking can be a funny old game. You drive halfway across the country in the middle of the night and get dressed up ready for another epic adventure. But 10 minutes walk away from the car, a shot presents itself and you just have to take it. Moments like this are pretty rare and well balanced out by the numerous times we go out and get no shot. So I'm very grateful for this pretty easy opportunity. Do you see the one I mean? There's a calf right in the middle of that gap. was a, a tricky situation we ended up in. We had a group of six fallow there. Um, it's like a couple of family groups just together. Sorry, the wind is making me cry. Um, there was a pricket and a couple of does and then we managed to pick out just down in the gloom there. It looked like a like a fawn, like a this year's fawn, but it might, might be a yearling, last year's fawn. And it was a really tricky spot for Dan to see on the camera, they were down in behind trees and with a number of deer like that together in a group, it was very, very tricky to make sure we were on the same one. They were just moving out of sight. I didn't want to go any further forward because this wind is blustering like hell. Um, we were really lucky just that they hadn't winded us anyway. But I've just put it just behind the shoulder on that youngster. Didn't actually see it go down in the scope. I had the scope cranked right up to 15 because I was trying to make sure I didn't shoot one with with little bumps on. So scope was a little bit high magnification for that range um, and for a shot off the of sticks, but shot felt perfect. Trigger broke just where I wanted. So it should be shot just in the heart or the lungs. And um, we'll go down and, and see if we can get her. Off on. You can see the exit there, yeah, just with the angle she was at. Bullet's gone in just on the shoulder, come out high front of the shoulder on the opposite side. Nice bit of damage there. That'll have smashed the spine and everything as it gone through. That's why she didn't take a step. But I don't think I've ever shot a deer in a in a more scenic spot. Just absolutely beautiful. Tricky enough shot, you can see through this through the trees we were shooting through. I don't know if it was clear on the camera, but I was having to try and pick pick my spot through the gaps. And these deer were moving as well. They didn't know we were there, but they were just mooching around in here. We didn't have long. Um, it's one of those, one of those um, situations where it's quite easy to, to panic and fluff the shot when there's a number of deer in a group and the group are moving out of, out of sight and you only have a couple of seconds to place an accurate shot. So that's where the where the practice and the experience comes in, but beautiful little one to take. So even though this is a young deer, we can see this sort of deformity of the hoof, and this is called Aladdin's slipper. And it's typical of this time of year in really wet, boggy ground. Uh, doesn't do the deer much harm at all at, at this point, and it won't have affected the carcass at all. But it's just an interesting one that you often see with fallow in, in wet ground like this. Haven't seen it in a number of years, um, but 
we've had a very, very wet year and we're in very wet and boggy ground here. So that's what that is if you see it. Just quite an interesting little deformity. We've a, quite a bit of a hump to get her back out of here. Um, luckily we've brought the, brought the rucksack. Daniel knows this ground well and he said it's, it's not somewhere that's too easy to drag out of. So <laughs> we'll get this one grollocked. This carcass is in incredibly good condition. Very little mud or anything on her. We've had a couple of dry days, but I'm just gonna do a suspended grollock. It's not something I normally do at all. Um, and it's something I want a bit more practice at. People who only do suspended grollocks struggle doing a grollock on the ground. I probably 99% of the deer I grollock are on the ground. So just said I'd hang this one up just to try and get a bit more practice and I'll explain what I struggle with in this sort of suspended situation because it can be quite difficult. It, it sort of changes the whole um, process, so to speak. But yeah, she's in good condition. Um, Viper Flex are showing another use. <laughs> They're pretty good for this. Just being careful to keep the knife tight to the pelvic bone. Pull to loosen the back passage and then just nip that across. One thing I will say about grollocking or gutting, people seem to be obsessed with speed. And a lot of people, when you've done this loads of times, you naturally will get faster at it, but speed is nothing to be proud of when you're doing this. You want to do it right, you want to do it properly and make sure there's no contamination. Don't be obsessed with being fast there's absolutely no rush. So just take your time, get it right. And as I say, don't be worried about people who brag about how fast they can do it. Now the one advantage of a suspended grolic is it pushes all the intestines down. So you end up with a bit of a gap here. So you can make your cut here and not be too worried about bursting anything inside. So you can make quite a positive little cut. And work your way in. You see you've got this sort of big cavity here. So I know, especially in earlier months when grass or when deer are full, um, that initial cut is what people can quite struggle with to get it into the stomach cavity without bursting something. So if it's a suspended grolic like this, you've got, I mean, you've got a big gap there. But the flip side of that is now when you get down here, you have all the stomach down filling this area. So this is very tight. So it's important to, um, push the stomach away from the skin where you're going to cut. I just like to do that with two fingers. And if you sort of curl your fingers out like that on the inside, you're pushing the skin away from the stomach. So you can just take it nice and slow with your knife. Just little nicks down the point of the knife pushing. You can see where my fingers are here. So my knuckles are then pushing the stomach back in. My fingers are pushing the skin out. So you're creating a nice little gap that you can Cut down with your knife. Now, ideally, I like to cut with the knife facing out when you're when the animal is lying down, and what it does is it stops that hair pinging. You can see as I'm cutting down there, that hair was just pinging off. So, the less hair you cut, the better, because that hair can potentially end up in the carcass. But with the suspended garlic, most of that hair is going to go down on the floor, so we don't worry too much about it. Now we get to the tricky bit because you have everything starting to fall out. There's a couple of different schools of thought on this. Some people like to split the brisket right down to the ground. That's actually what we're gonna to do today. But this is where I sort of tend to struggle because you have to push the knife into the cavity, into the chest cavity, and you don't want to burst the grass bag. So what I've found the best thing is to do is to get your hand right down in and push the grass bag back up with the back of your hand until you get down to the brisket and then pointing the knife down and in, push all the way into the chest cavity. 
Now the point of the knife is away from your grass bag. So with a firm downward pressure, we can just split the brisket like so. So now we have the brisket split and we have the stomach open. The only thing going to hold all this in is the diaphragm and the esophagus down further. So if I just let this go and start to feed it back, and feed back at the back of the spleen here. Pull forward the back passage. It just cut right around the diaphragm and gravity starts to do its job. Just one little nick on the diaphragm. Now we can see there, nice clean carcass. Everything has gone downhill. A little bit of blood in the chest cavity, but that's all gone straight down. We've got no blood has come back through and onto the inside of the haunches or anything like that. And the cooling process can start very quickly. Just when you're doing the, the front and back legs, if you just use the back of the knife, just the last sort of inch of the blade, it just keeps the front of the knife sharp if you're going to do another grolic or something like that. But if you just tend to use the back of the knife for any bone work, um, it keeps the front section of your knife, which you're actually going to use for opening the, the stomach keeps that nice and sharp, you haven't put it near any bone. So as I say, there's advantages and disadvantages to suspended grolic. Obvious advantages are carcasses up off the ground and you're not contaminating it if you're in muddy ground or anything like that as soon as you open the carcass. Disadvantages can be difficult to find somewhere to suspend it securely. I've done it before where I've been in a position like this and as soon as I push down on the brisket, branch up in using brakes and everything goes in a heap on the floor um, and that can get quite dangerous when you've got a sharp knife in your hand but yeah nice to try it for something different and um, you didn't mess it up too badly the other reason for using a dry bag is it stops this blood getting on your frame which is easily washed off one major disadvantage of a dry bag is they're not really breathable so the meat can heat up so you don't want to have it in it for too long so this is a better option, if, but you're going to get a little bit of blood on your gear, which isn't the end of the world. Ah. But a more comfortable way to get deer out of a place like this, you won't find much, much easier, faster and safer than dragging. Trying out new methods and perfecting new skills like these is important, or how else are we going to learn? I may not have done it perfectly, and I'm sure your comments will tell me all about that. But to help me and anyone else watching who hasn't perfected the suspended grolic, how would you have done it differently? Leave a comment below and let's all learn. Now, I have some pretty difficult news. We're going to have to miss at least one month of Field Sports Ireland. Uh, just with the current situation, I can't get home to Ireland to film just now. So until things go back to normal, um, you're not going to you're not going to see us again next month, which I'm gutted about because I know a lot of you really enjoy the show. And just on that note, if you're stuck at home and you're having a little bit of a shop online, just think about supporting your local industry and your local shops because a lot of them are still operating online, and we need to support the gun industry, the cartridge industry, the shooting industry local to us now because those guys are struggling. Um, we're not going to have much of a, a clay season this summer and it's doubtful whether we'll have a normal game season in the winter. So if you are having a shop, just, just think about supporting those guys and please don't cancel any game days or anything like that and don't be thinking that you're going to get some deals if you hold off paying your deposits. We need to support the industry now while we can. So just have a little bit of think about that and stay safe guys, we'll see you soon.